general thoughts first day being back spring practice what's it like out there no uh, yeah no pads but uh, good to see a bunch of guys running around um good energy out there uh continuation of the off season which i thought was excellent um you can see guys moving around with a purpose but different guys are in different phases of their career and so you know individually each guy has different things that they're working on um there's some guys that are just figuring out what to do you know like what exactly you know where am i going young you know young guys or some newcomers and there's guys who have been veteran who played a lot of football and so they're they're working on other things so um and, and then as a team we're really working hard on all the no talent issues and um you know building that discipline and skill but uh, it was a good first day, good energy, but but no pads on, so not much to report. And folks, I'm going to ask. I'm an, I can only keep coaching about 20 minutes, so I'm going to ask if we could just uh, one question per guy. Bill Landis, Knights of uh, Kings of the North, and the podcast. Brian, <laughs> 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 uh, uh, I guess he's about to ask you about the addition of Chip Kelly. I'm, I'm kind of curious about just his, his track record with with run game. He's like, right. every time he's been in, every year he's been in college, he's had one of the best run games in college football. I'm, I'm sure you guys want to run it a little better than you did last year. Um, how much of a hand does he have in kind of crafting that, changing that, just kind of you know, molding that attack as you feel? Uh, yeah, huge, a huge part of it. Uh, I think the great thing for he and I is that um, you know, we see things the same way. Uh, but I think to your point, um, you know, he brings a background of, of running the football that um, you know, is really impressive. And um, certainly we know what we need to do to run the football. But... I think he's excited about you know the guys that we have. Um, I think some of our guys up front have had really good off season, so excited to see how the, the offensive line develops over these uh, 15 practices. Um, but also you know the running backs that we have, um, and, and all of our quarterbacks are mobile, so I think that that's significant as well. Uh, but but it's been great you know it just early on to you know sh exchange ideas of things that have gone on the last few years for him, things that we've done here. And, you know, as we go, what's going to be right for Ohio State, we'll continue to develop that. Right behind him, Tony Gerben, Buckeye Huddle. Ryan asked uh, a month ago about Sunny Styles. He was with the linebackers today. Is that a permanent thing? What, what did that conversation? Yeah, we want to, um, you know, put guys in position to be the most successful they can, but also embrace it. And, and Sonny, um, you know, has wanted to, you know, do whatever he can to, to help the team. And um, we know that his skill set uh, is versatile. And we're going to continue to work on that. Uh, but but you will see him at linebacker. Um, you'll also see some do, do some other things as time goes on. But uh, we think um, you know he brings a lot to the table there. Um, he can do so many different things. And um, and I think that's, again, the exciting part year in and year out is you have different, different people in different spots. And then you have to figure out how you want to utilize them the best. Today was just day one, real basic. Uh, but he was working at linebacker today, so we'll watch the film and, and continue to build this package. Uh, front row, Dave Biddle, 24-7 Sports. Ryan, Chip has been your coach when you were a quarterback. He's been your boss. He is your mentor, and now you're his boss. How, how unique is that in your, in your book? And I, and I think the other part of it is, is, you know, we've been friends, and we continue to be friends. And I think that's probably um, the thing that over the years, you know, we're both very, very competitive, um, you know, I could tell you stories, not right now, about when I played or even when we've coached. Uh, but then, you know, when when the meeting gets over, we get off the field, we're hugging it out, and there's a lot of love there. Um, I owe um, much of where I'm at right now uh, to him. Uh, and so this isn't about, you know, any of that as opposed to, you know, um, a couple guys part of a great uh, program right now that are trying to go chase some great goals. and. Um, yeah, he's been great. Um, you know, he's really uh, done a great job already of connecting with a bunch of the, the staff members and coaches, but more importantly, the players. And um, it's going to be fun journey to go on, but it's going to be uh, competitive every day. And that's one thing that he's always done and something I've always admired about him and, and the ability to adapt over time and change. And um, so, yeah, already it's been, it's been, you know, fun to come to work every day because you know you're going to get challenged. Um, but even more, as you look ahead to, you know, this spring, this preseason, as we get into the year, you know, where, where is this team going to be? What's the journey look like? Uh, what's the offense look like? Um, but, uh, but so far, it, it's, it's been, um, you know, enjoyable to come in and, you know, be able to step out of the room and know that, you know, there's a bunch of guys in our room that are grinding on it that are going to get it right. Super quick. Is he going to coach from the field or the box? Uh, I don't know if we've talked about that yet. I know he's always been a guy who likes to be down on the field. Um, but uh, but we haven't got that far yet. Yeah. Rob Haller, Columbus Dispatch. 
Yeah, Ryan, you've talked about wanting to sort of step back from play calling, uh, see the bigger picture. Yep. But the guys yesterday were saying you may be stepping back also from the quarterback room. I mean, you kind of have this tag as the quarterback whisperer. I wasn't whispering today out there, I can tell you that. <laughs> I mean, how have you had to juggle that, that, that decision? Because that's kind of what you're known for. That's your strength, but you're kind of backing off that a little bit. That decision, and, and is that how it's going to work? Yeah, I, um, you know, Chip is, is coaching the quarterbacks, and, and you know, so much of what I learned was from him. And, and vice, you know, we, we work together in so many different areas. And, and then, you know, I coach for him, and, and even um, you know, it's with the with the Eagles and with the 49ers and, and with him. You know, there's just a lot of back and forth there, and so there's a lot of conversation. And um, so I'll still be very much uh, involved, but certainly, you know, Chip is running it. He's going to run the meetings. He's going to do all those types of things. But um, but there's a lot of give and take there as well. A lot of conversation. And um, but it's it's you know it's a good group of quarterbacks. You know they're. Um, you know they they they've got really good leadership. They've had a really good off season. I think you know all the feedback we're getting from Mick has been very very positive. Um, you know we, I think we, we counted up between seven on seven and team reps. I think we had 150 reps today, and that's that's a bunch, and that's great because that's what these guys need. And the more we can spread those around, the better. Pat Murphy, 24/7 Sports. Uh, Brian, with the quarterback situation, you have some veteran guys, yep. uh, but none of them have a ton of experience in games in your offense. How do you divide up spring reps so that you can get them ready for what you hope will be a successful season, but you've also got some of these young guys that still need one? Well, I think, like I mentioned, we're trying to get as many as we can. If we can get 150 a day, that, that's, that's going to you know, be a little bit different maybe when the pads are on. But um, the more we can get, the better, because these guys all need those reps. And then we'll put your body of work together and kind of figure out, you know, probably halfway through the spring where guys are at and keep going from there. Um, so I think the key is right now we have the ability because of um, mid years and, and those type of things to have a pretty full roster. Um, where maybe in the past in the spring, um, you know, a few years back before we had so many guys at mid year, the transfer portal was wasn't where it's at right now. Um, the preseason roster would look a lot different than the spring roster now. It's, you know, there's only going to be a few, a handful of guys that actually, um, you know, come in during the summer. So we're able to get three, three groups, uh, reps, and equal reps. So again, it all comes down to those reps and making the best of them. Stephen Means, Cleveland.com. You mentioned last time we talked to you about Josh Fryer potentially playing some guard in the spring. We saw Luke in there today as well. What, what do you like about him on the interior? Well, he's very athletic. He's somebody who, uh, to me, is, is very skilled in a lot of areas, uh, making the transition to the offensive line here in the last couple of years. Um, we think he's got a very, very high ceiling. And you know, he's got a list of things, that just like everybody has, that um, he's going to work on um, this offseason. Um, he, you know, he played tackle last year and, and um, did some good things. And, and we think he can still play some tackle. But we also really want to look at him at guard. One, because that's sort of an open spot right now. Uh, and then two, we also think with his quickness, he can get on guys quickly. And he can bend. And that's very, very important in that position. And so uh, with some of the schemes we're going to be running, we think you know, he has the skill set in order to do it. So now he just needs the reps to go f you know, prove he can do it. Uh, I think we'll come up for air in the spring and figure after spring's over and figure out what kind of progress has been made, evaluate it, and then go from there. Spencer Holbrook, Vladimir Rowe. I don't know if you've had a team with this much experience on the, on the spring roster. Right. Um, when you have this kind of situation, does it become advantageous for you guys to be able to get so many young guys reps because you can kind of set the veterans off the side and know that they're taking care of their business? Yeah, like I mentioned before, there, there, there's guys that are different points of their career on the roster right now. And so um, as time goes on, right now we just want to get as many reps as we can and get these guys going. Uh, but, but as time goes on, I think to your point, we have to evaluate some guys. Some guys are, are working on getting things better. You know, let's take a guy like um, you know, JT or Tyleek or you know, Cody Simon. I mean, they have a, a list of things that they're trying to get done uh, purf purposefully this spring. Then there's some guys, uh, take you know, some of the defensive linemen like uh, you know, Jason Moore, Caden McDonald, uh, Will Smith. I mean, these guys are trying to you know, push to, to get on the field and play. Completely different position. Uh, take a guy like Jeremiah Smith, who's a freshman, who just literally, you know, got here about a month or two ago, and is learning the offense for the first time. Um, 
you know, then you have guys uh, like, you know, Quinshawn or Will who have played football before, but now they're learning our offense. So all different guys in different points of their career. Um, so we want to get as many reps as we can, but knowing that, um, like you said, there's certain guys that have played a bunch of football here. And, you know, the idea for them isn't to just get as many reps as we can. The idea for them is to be pointed in what we're trying to get done with them as, as the spring goes on. Austin Ward, uh, the podcast. Ryan, you've always talked about the quarterback position battles is carrying over to practice 16 in August. With the, every, the way everything is changing in college football, yeah. is there any part of you that feels like that there has to be more urgency or that it can't work that way anymore? Yeah, I, do, I, I hear what you're saying. Um, I think we'll get a feel for how it all shakes out at the end of the spring, but to your point, um, it is different because of the the, the, the portal, w you know, window opening, um, and and we do have you know a bunch of guys in that room. So, um, yeah, we're hoping to see some delineation as the spring goes on. Dan Hope, Eleven Warriors. Ryan, obviously, you know, Chip. A lot of his background is you know coaching offensive linemen. What made you confident he could be the guy to coach the quarterbacks this year? Oh, um, I mean, he's he's coached it all for so long, and you know, he was my quarterback coach, and and um, you know even. Um, you know, back in the NFL, I mean, he had a huge hand in a lot of the quarterback meetings. He would sit in on the meetings, um, you know, and I think even back, you know, when I played, you know, he coached all kinds of different positions, and I think that's what gave him, um, you know, the, the, the point of view of seeing it from all 22. Uh, I think sometimes guys, you know, they get caught up in one position and, um, you know, they can kind of get a little bit narrow-minded. He sees it all, has seen it all for a long time, um, has a great feel for it. And, you know, you want to be, when you're the play caller, you want to be lockstep with the quarterback because it's just certain things that, you know, when you're calling a play, we went over that in a meeting and I'm calling this play for this reason. And when the, when the quarterback understands this is why it's being called for these types of reasons, it's already been covered in the meeting. And if you're in those meetings, then you have intimate details on what exactly is being said. It allows you to call the game with more confidence, making sure that both guys are on the same page because those are the, the two guys that have to be on the same page. Yeah. Joey Kaufman, Columbus Dispatch. Brian, Chip's teams at Oregon at the time of college football were probably played at some of the fastest pace. Um, maybe the UCLA teams weren't quite that fast, but still over time it just played sort of that up-tempo style. Does, does that background change anything, what you guys want to do, either practicing down the road sort of thing? Well, tempo is always going to be a part of what we do. Uh, it has changed. Some of the rules have changed. But I think more significantly just about you know what chips done on offense over the years is you know at that time it was innovative to be fast that was kind of new and, and so i think he's always been innovative on how he's done things and put his players in the best situation to be successful and so what does that look like right now in college football in 2024 that's that's the journey that we're on right now um will tempo be a part of it yes will we go fast every single play no uh will we huddle every play probably not but maybe i mean that's that's part of it but I think all the different ways that we're going to attack defenses uh, is going to be exciting, but also mixing in the tempos, the personnel groupings. Um, every team is a little bit different. And so um, it's not cookie cutter. But I think the point is that he's always been innovative in everything he's done. And then we continue to be that way this year, then we'll have a chance to go reach our goals. Kellyanne Stitz, WSYX. Coach, how have you seen Will Howard and the other new faces continue to integrate themselves into the quarterback room? Well, I think you don't just walk into Ohio State, I've said this before, and just you know think you're going to go become the starting quarterback. It doesn't work that way. There's just too much pride here. What Mick Marotti and our strength staff does here in the off season, there's just a lot that comes with it. You don't just show up in the weight room and then go home. I mean, there's a lot of accountability that happens, and our guys take a lot of pride in that. And so there's only one way to do that, and that's to earn it through respect. Um, but you know, we had our champions meeting yesterday in the first quarter. And we had a bunch of newcomers, you know, um, grayed out as gold, and and that's a big deal, and that's how you earn the respect of the guys around you. Uh, but that's going to be like that for the freshmen as well. You know, the guys who are coming in and um, you know should still be seniors in, in high school are here trying to trying to do that. Now they're younger, and they don't have as much experience as maybe some of the older guys like Will and um, you know Quinchon or Caleb Downs. But um, but they still have to earn the respect of the team just as just, just as much. And that starts, you know, in the in the, the weight room, but ultimately it's going to matter when we get on the field. Cameron Teague Robinson, the athletic. Brian, you last spring you wanted to kind of run around a little bit more as like a CEO type, or just kind of GM of the team. Is the feeling of this practice was it any different for you knowing you have a chip and a guy who kind of 
wholeheartedly trust in everything. Yeah, there's, there's no question. And, and maybe it isn't exactly where I'm walking around in the field, but where, where you know, I'm able to, th you know, look where my eyes are going, you know, just thinking ahead of, you know, the message that maybe I want to give the team or, or maybe grabbing a guy on defense and, and giving a message to him. It just allows me to be more present with the whole operation, um, which is something I recognize that I need to do. Doug Lay Maurice, Kings of the North. Just a logistical question. With all these reps you're getting the quarterbacks, are you viewing Will and Devin as the two most veteran guys? Do you want what they get to be equal, like with, with the ones or with the twos, or is somebody getting more with the ones? I think at least in the first quarter of the spring, I mean, we're just going to let them go play and just get a bunch of reps and roll them. I think as, as that starts to settle a little bit, we'll start to maybe, you know, make sure, you know, guys are, are getting the reps with the ones that need to. But... Um, but we're going to let them compete, you know, and, it, and it's hard for us to say, you know, someone like, you know, Julian saying or Lincoln or, you know, Air or whoever, hey, you're going to come in here and compete when, you know, the first thing they do is take a bunch of reps with the threes. Now, we want to roll you, whether that whatever drill it might be, and so that you're getting reps with everybody so you can show what you do. Um, so we'll compete. I mean, we have the, the fortune of having a little bit of time right now. And then as things shake, I think the the big focus and this is something we talked to our staff about is in the spring we want to develop the individual player as we get closer to the preseason now we start to really grab on to you know the schemes and the team and the chemistry of the group now you still need to understand the schemes in the spring and how you fit into them but that's something that we want to make sure we're, we're at, you know developing each individual player right now and that's the focus more than how does he fit in with the scheme or the chemistry of the offense or defense and as an extension of that question will comes in as a starter from another place Devin was close last year, right? Was right in that battle. A couple times when he got his chance, he got hurt. He was very emphatic with us yesterday about like, hey, man, like I'm, I'm here to compete. Like, what, what do you think of where Devin is just in this fight right I now? I mean, I was impressed with how he practiced today. He had good demeanor. He had that same, um, you know, uh, conviction out in practice today that, that he shared with you guys um, the past couple days. And so if he keeps building like that, I mean, he's going to have a hell of a spring. Andy Backstrom, Letterman Row. Uh, Ryan, the Cotton Bowl, you mentioned that his first was struggling a little bit in the play in the game. How is he doing now? How do you view that center competition to set? Uh, he, he had a really good last couple months. Um, it was excellent with Mick. I think having that year of experience has really helped him. Um, he's, you know, his numbers in the weight room are very, very good. Um, so, you know, the combination of having a year under his belt and um, having a good off season, you know, allows him a great opportunity to go compete this spring. Um, you know, we'll kind of see what it, what it all looks like here. Um, again, the pads aren't on, so with the offensive line, we won't know anything for a little while. Um, but we've seen strides for him. And again, improvement marked with, you know, or combined with the fact that he played last year a bunch and we won a bunch of games with him in there, uh, that matters. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm fired up to see what he looks like here as we head into the middle of spring. Dylan Davis, Delaware Gazette. Talked about the development of the individual with the quarterbacks. Uh, for Julian and Air, like, I guess, uh, is there anything in particular that you're looking for for them to like maximize their spring if they come away saying we did this or got better at that that would maximize their spring? I know they're just trying to find their way right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, but you're right. I mean, they're learning what to do. That's the first level. We talked about this before. The first level is what to do, then how to do it, then why you're doing it, and, and you know what is you know the first thing right now. That being said, make great decisions, be confident, and take care of the football. These are going to be the, the things that they got to do. Uh, compete your tail off, trust it. But they also have to put in a little extra work because they don't know. So you know when you walk on the field, can you take a meeting to the field, or do you need three or four reps in order to say, okay, now I got it, as opposed to the real good ones. It's one mistake, I learn from it, I move on, and I continue to build fast. If we can see those type of trends, then we'll have some. Bill Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. Yeah, I was his first day, but I was curious your very first impressions of the new guys of Will on the, seeing them on the field. Will and Caleb Downs and Quinshawn, Seth McLaughlin, even Jeremy Smith, Jeremiah Smith. Yeah, I think all flashed. Um, I mean, you notice them when it's going that fast. Or we're getting that many reps. It's hard to really focus on one guy, but um, you know they all flashed at times, and so we'll get on the film and kind of look. But uh, you can see the talent in all of those guys. Nathan Barrett, Cleveland.com. You made it pretty clear that Chip's coming here to run your offense. I think he said you know a similar thing, the Ohio State offense. At the same time, I know this is a more developmental time, but how much are you guys talking scheme and, and talk yet? And how excited are you to see sort of his brain? Your offense running through his brain, I guess. Well, I think the thing is, you know, in terms of terminology, I think it was important to keep a lot of the terminology because our guys already knew it. So in day one of spring, you know, there was there was a, a quick, 
you know, uh, learning curve on some of it. Uh, now that being said, what we've done here has been a lot of what I learned from him when I was with him before. So this is not like you know two different you know um, you know offenses trying to come together. Um, what we've done here, there's been a lot of great things. What he's done has been, um, you know. By the way, again, a lot of what we've done is what you know I, I took when when I came from you know the NFL from him, and you know when I played for him. So there's just so many things in common, and a lot of times we'll be in meetings and. You know, he'll kind of look at me and say, you know, is, is it this play? Yes, it's just another another word for it. So the terminology, we tried to keep somewhat intact. Uh, he's made some tweaks already to the run game that I think have been excellent um, and will continue to be that way. Um, but but it is important, I, I think, as I've, I've thought about this, to make sure that, you know, we are keeping it the Ohio State offense. This is not, you know, my offense or his offense or somebody else's offense. This is the Ohio State offense um, because we want it to be sustainable. We don't want... Um, you know, someone to come in or come out, and then all of a sudden has to change. And I think that's been important to make make sure that that um, you know continues now through in the, into the future. Whitney Hardy, WCMH. Brian, um, lots of new faces today, and having Chip now here with you, just kind of a softball question here. Was it fun out there today? As, there's so much pressure we always talk about here. Right. Was there any different level of fun today versus maybe the last couple of years? I think being around a group of guys that enjoy being at work uh, every day like they are is fun. Yeah, I, I, it is. Um, and it has to do with, you know, the staff, but it really comes down to the players. These guys bring energy every day. Uh, they enjoy being out there. They're, they're as close to NFL players and pro players as I've been around. They're very, very competitive. Uh, they can't wait to get the pads on. But it's fun to be around guys like that. And you have to bring it every day as a coach here. You know, when you walk in front of these guys or you have a meeting in front of these guys, you better be prepared because they, they have a high level of expectation that we're going to coach at a high level. And we're all holding each other accountable right now. And so, yeah, that is fun as a coach. And we'll uh, wrap it up with Tim May from the Tim May Show and Letterman Road. Yeah, uh, following up on that, I just wanted to ask you, it brought the team together before the practice started and laid out some things. But was there ever a moment today when you were roaming around and maybe ranting sometimes and things where you – just kind of like looked at, there's Caleb Downs, there's Jeremiah Smith, there's all these returnees. There's a quarterback room where you kind of went, damn. I mean, this this is a pretty good assemblage of talent. And do you kind of like swallow hard there too? Like, you know, <laughs> yeah, I, we're I, expecting a lot about that from yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. I think um, during our workouts and uh, mat drills or seeing some of the team runs is kind of when – um, you think about those type of things. You, you know, you look at the guys and you see the potential, and it gets you really excited. But then, as much talent as we have, it's going to take. The, it's going to be the no talent issues that actually help us win our and reach our goals. So that's been the focus now. And so once we get on the field, it's you know, that's what you focus on. You know, it isn't seeing Jeremiah run a goal ball. Like that's great, but like it's you know it's the discipline of knowing what to do. It's the focus. It's running to the ball. It's effort. It's energy. It's all the things that again take no talent. And so. Um, that's going to be the focus. Uh, it's not about the talent anymore. That was, a, that was about the last couple months. Now we need to acquire the skill and discipline it's going to take to go reach our goals, and that's what spring's all about. Can I ask one quick follow-up? Of course. Uh, has Chip embraced this role of working under you? I mean, how, how have you noticed his approach? I, I just, again, he and I have always had a relationship. I just it was never really like that, even, you know, when I played for him or – we worked under him. Um, you know, we work together, and um, I don't. I don't look at it like he works for me. I, he works with me, and that's just the way I've always been because I love him and have for a long time. And I don't think he looks at it that way either. And so we all we both want to reach a goal, just like everybody else. We're uh, fortunate to be around such a great program, you know, that has unbelievable tradition, but in a place where you know we have what's in place to go reach our goals next year. And I think that's what fires us both up, but just everybody else on the staff as well. I think we do have one last question. Bill Landis, uh, Kings of the North. Yeah, I'm just curious, if, is there anybody that you know is not available for spring ball? Yeah, we do have some guys that aren't available. I don't know, Jerry, if, if we talked about that. Um, do you want to go through a couple of those guys that won't be available this spring? The guys that, that won't uh, be practicing out there this spring will be uh, Malik Hartford, Peyton Pierce, Miles Walker, uh, Bryce West, and Court Williams. It's fair to say that um, we would expect all those guys back in the preseason, though. So, uh, but they just won't be participating this spring. Everybody else, there will be a couple guys maybe that are limited, but uh, but everybody else will be able to go. Okay, hey, thanks, guys. Appreciate you guys. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you.